This video will discuss the equilibrium constant for species which are not necessarily in the gas phase. So thus far in this chapter we've been looking at reactions of gases, mostly ideal gases, and then in the previous video we looked at real gases as well. And that all involves looking at the chemical potential of each individual species. So we have our prototypical reaction A plus B, reactants going to C plus D, the products, each with their stoichiometric coefficients, nu A, B, C, and D. And getting the Gibbs energy of reaction depends on knowing the chemical potential of each of those species. So for ideal gases, the chemical potential is equal to the chemical potential at the standard pressure of one bar plus RT times the natural log of the pressure divided by the standard pressure of one bar. For real gases, we took this equation where we replaced pressure with the analog of pressure for real gases, which is fugacities. So this quantity here was Fi divided by F standard, or one bar as well. But now we want to replace that for an expression for what the chemical potential is of a general system. So something that isn't necessarily gas, something that could be liquid, it could be solid, or more importantly, what we'll discuss in this video is something which is dissolved in a solution. All right, so what that analog is that we've defined from previous videos is that the chemical potential equals the standard chemical potential, the value of it at one bar of pressure, plus RT times natural log of the activity of the system. Okay, so the activity, as I said, is the activity of species I. For gases, this results in the same kind of equation we've had thus far. For real gases, the activity is defined as the fugacity divided by the standard fugacity. So F naught equals one bar. This works for ideal gases too, because the fugacity is equal to the pressure for ideal gases. It's just PI over P naught, also one bar. So all of gases thus far are covered by this type of equation, and we're, and we're good. Um, for solvents, things which are liquids in solution, which are a dominant portion of the mole fraction. The activity, of, the activity of a solvent approaches its mole fraction as the mole fraction approaches one. So the chemical, the standard chemical potential for a solvent is equal to the chemical potential of the pure liquid of that solvent. So our activity there of solvents is approaching their mole fraction. For solutes, things which are uh, very dilute in a solution, which have a very low mole fraction. The activities of those we can define from previous chapters either based off of their molality or their molarity. So the activity of solutes approaches those values, according to Henry's law, as the concentration of them approaches zero, as the molality or the molarity approaches zero. Here for solutes, the standard, chem the standard chemical potential is equal to the chemical potential at one molal for a molarity activity. So one molal is a solution which is one mole per kilogram of solvent. For concentration, for molarity, the standard chemical potential is equal to the chemical potential at one molar of solution. One molar is something which has one mole per liter of solution. So what we're doing here is putting all phases on the same footing with respect to equilibrium constants. We know what their, we know what their uh, chemical potential is as a function of their concentration, whether that's in terms of pressure, molarity, or, or molality, mole fraction, what have you. Everything is the same, and we're defining activities which allow us to get an equilibrium constant for things in various phases. So what this allows us to do is under the same kinds of derivation that we used in previous videos in this chapter, we have that the reaction Gibbs energy equals the standard reaction Gibbs energy, which is the reaction uh, is the Gibbs energy of reaction when the activity of every uh, species is one plus gas constant times temperature times the natural log of the activity of our react sorry the reactivity of our products in the numerator to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the activity 
of our reactants to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients in the denominator. So you might hear this equation here where we have the Gibbs energy of reaction expressed in terms of activities defined as the Lewis equation. So the standard activity, uh, we don't have that as a reference here because we're defining the activity, the standard activity to be one, uh, no matter what we have here, because the activity for every species that we have is already defined relative to a standard. For gases, it's one bar. For solvents, it's one for its mole fraction. Solutes, it's one mole per liter, one mole per kilogram for molarity and molality. And what this gives us is what is called the activity quotient for it's a reaction quotient in terms of activities. QA equals AC, AD, each to the power of their coefficients, divided by, for same thing for the reactants, their activities to the power of their coefficients. This gives us that the reaction Gibbs energy equals the standard reaction Gibbs energy plus RT log Q, and the standard Gibbs energy of reaction is equal to negative RT times the natural log of the activity equilibrium constant, which is the value of QA when everything is at equilibrium. So there, Q, KA, as I said, is the reaction quotient or the activity quotient whenever the reaction is at equilibrium. So just as with pressures and fugacities, this is a function of temperature and is going to obey similar kinds of behavior, uh, behavior versus temperature that we saw in the previous video on the Van't Hoff equation.